there are standard ingredients when it comes to gum manufacturing, including latex, sweeteners, corn syrup, and natural or artificial flavors. However, the specific ingredients are unique to each manufacturing company, and this information is usually kept secret to protect the authenticity of the gum. Although the ingredients in each chewing gum are kept as generic as possible, the production process is the same, and that's not the secret. For Wrigley's, all the ingredients are thoroughly checked to see if they meet the company's standards before they are taken to the factory. The first ingredient that's prepared is the gum base, and the constitution of this base differs. Normally, the gum base is obtained from latex extracted from the bark of rubber trees, but for the past few decades, the rate of latex extraction has increased exponentially. Due to this hike, the amount of natural latex available is significantly less than the global demand. Therefore, synthetic rubber is more commonly used for gum-based production these days. In some cases, natural rubber is used for about 10 to 20% of the base, and synthetic rubber makes up the rest. Afterward, the newly produced gum base is cut into small balls and sent to the bubblegum factory, where they are used for the first production stage. At the factory, a factory worker pours the gum base into a large kettle, and the base is boiled for a while until it's melted into a thick syrup. This melting process takes place at a temperature of about 243 degrees Fahrenheit, and apart from melting the base, it also helps purify it from bacteria and other germs. Next, the base is passed through screens and filtered to remove dirt. From the screens, the gum base is poured into the kettles again and reheated. Afterward, the liquid is poured into a large mixer, which can hold a lot of ingredients, and other ingredients are added to the mixture while the large rotating blades of the mixer slowly stir the mixture. These additional ingredients are mostly sweeteners and flavors. They are added at appropriate intervals and in the right quantities while the mixture is being stirred. Sweeteners generally use up about 80% of the mixture, and either natural or artificial sweeteners or even both can be used. The types of natural sweeteners used include sugar extracted from cane sugar or corn syrup, and examples of artificial sweeteners are saccharin or aspartame. The sweeteners are added either in liquid form or as finely granulated powder to prevent lumps from accumulating. After the sweetener has been stirred with the base mixture, flavoring is added. These flavorings are obtained from either natural or artificial sources. Popular mint flavors, for example, are typically obtained from the oils of the most aromatic plants, while fruit flavors are made artificially because it's impossible to grow the number of fruits that gum-producing companies would demand. So to get apple flavor, ethyl acetate is produced in the lab, benzaldehyde is made for cherry flavor, and so on. Generally, flavoring accounts for only about 2% of the mixture's weight. Finally, softeners and fillers are added to the mixture to keep the gum fresh, soft, and juicy for the duration of its shelf life. Preservatives are added in as well, and the entire mixture is stirred until all the ingredients are well dispersed and the mixture is consistent. After that, the different gum mixtures are put through the next production phase, which is kneading. Huge masses of the gum are transferred to a kneading machine which pummels the mass until it is rubbery and smooth. And after a while of kneading, the gum masses are passed through huge rollers. Huge chunks of the gum are cut and put into a roller that squeezes out the gum into long strips, which are passed through an extrusion machine that cuts these strips into the width of an actual bubble gum. Next, the thin gum strips are passed through a machine that sprinkles granulated sugar on them for seasoning and, in preparation for the next phase, cutting. A steel conveyor transports the gum strips to a slicing machine which divides the gum into small individual pieces. These pieces are then fed to a spray dryer which forms the crunchy coating around the gum center. While this machine tumbles the pieces, a syrup mixture of water, sweeteners, and coloring is sprayed onto the gum. This combination of tumbling and spray coating forms a candy shell that encloses the soft, juicy gum centers. At this point, the bubblegum production is complete, and the gum pieces are ready to be packaged. However, due to the machines they've been exposed to, the gum pieces are heated, and attempting to package them like that would cause them to stick to each other and their wrappers. To prevent this, 
They are passed through a cooling machine which reduces their temperature to about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. They stay in this machine for about 40 to 50 minutes before they are transported to the packaging area. A machine sorts the gums into different flavors, and before they get to the packaging area, some special factory workers inspect the gums and test them based on appearance, taste, texture, and stretchiness, along with other physical qualities. Those that fall short of the company's standards are discarded, and only the perfect ones proceed to the packaging area. The wrapping process is extremely fast, and the machine feeds each gum piece into a plain aluminum foil within a fraction of a second. Once they've been wrapped, another part of the machine folds the ends of the wrap before dumping them onto a conveyor belt. This wrapping machine processes about 900 pieces of bubble gum per minute, and the process is so fast you can barely monitor it when it's functioning at normal speed. Next, the conveyor belt moves the wrapped bubble gum to the second packaging area. And for Wrigley's pellet-style gums, they're mostly packaged in one of two ways. The first option is arranging these bubblegum pieces into a blister pack. The gum pieces are fed into the plastic compartments of the pack, and they are sealed using branded aluminum foil. The other alternative for pellet-style gum is to weigh them and portion them into a branded plastic bottle, typically containing 40 pieces. Other packaging methods involve portioning the gum pieces into a branded Wrigley sachet or arranging them into rows and wrapping them into traditional packaging sealed at both ends. For the bubble gum cut into sticks, they're wrapped in aluminum, folded at both ends, and plastic clamshell-like package. All the packaging variants are arranged in boxes that are taken to the warehouse or loaded on vehicles that transport them to the retail stores worldwide. Wrigley's Food Company has been manufacturing the world's best bubblegum for over a hundred years. Since the company's beginning, the manufacturing process has remained the same mostly except for a few changes like using xylitol as a sweetener instead of aspartame as a sweetener, and decreasing the sugar content for oral health concerns. All the same, Wrigley's bubblegum is the best out there, and it's available in different flavors for you to enjoy. What's your favorite bubblegum variant? Leave your answer in the comments section below.